Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm one of the killer whale trainers here at SeaWorld of Orlando. We get the question a lot, how is Tilikum doing? Well, actually, the truth is he is doing great. He does a variety of different interactions every single day, including shows, playtimes, and interacting with enrichment devices. He spends a lot of time with his grandson, Trua, who is nine years old. In fact, in this video clip here today, you can see him and Trua playing together. A lot of Tilikum's fans are asking us, how is he doing? Uh, what does he look like today? And I gotta tell you, we're cautiously optimistic right now. For the past three weeks, he's been making very slow, incremental, good progress. When he came out of the med pool, he had been there for a while, and he wasn't swimming a lot, but every day he's swimming a little bit more. Just recently, he started playing with toys, and just a couple days ago, we were able to get him to slide out onto the scale. So we can get an accurate weight on him. So this is all progress. And uh, talking with the vets, they're telling us his blood work is getting better too. So um, it's a very guarded situation, but we're pretty excited about his the little progress that he's making. A lot of people ask me, does Tilikum spend his days alone? Absolutely not. Tilikum spends a whole lot of time with Trua, his grandson. These guys play a lot together. And actually, right now, they're going to go get a couple of their toys. So guests at SeaWorld might see Tilikum swimming in front of our large underwater viewing panels. They might see him playing with toys. They might see him in a show. Or they might see him at rest. Because you see, like all animals, killer whales do rest. When the public interacts with Tilikum behind those large panels of glass, that's one thing. But the shows are when they really get engaged because he sends so much 55 degree salt water into their laps that there's nothing else for them to do but engage with Tilikum the killer whale. Uh, so when I think of Tilly, I uh, just think of uh, how much of an interactive animal he is. He just loves to be a part of everything you feel. Uh, like if there's trainers around his pool, uh, we're cleaning, we are uh, just doing anything. He always comes on over and kind of wants to be a part of everything, wants to be with the trainers. I remember the first time I saw Tilly come. I was here watching him in a show. I happened to be in high school and I knew this was a career I wanted to pursue, but actually seeing him, his amazing size and how graceful he was, he really inspired me to continue to pursue this dream I have of working here at SeaWorld. One of my favorite things with Tilly is when he does a slide out and I run up there with him and as he comes out of the water, you can see the guests and the children react to him. They actually jump out of their seats because he comes up and makes a splash, sticks his tongue out, and it's just so amazing. Uh, it's not a job. You come here because you have a passion for these animals and you become a part of this team or family, so to speak, of trainers that love these animals and work with them. As you do that, the whales become a family to you as well. And we're all a family that's here that you know tries to inspire everybody else to care for these animals. So Chilicum's first meal of the day today happens to be all herring, and some of this herring has some of his vitamins inside of it. I really like the way Chilicum looks this morning. He looks bright, he looks engaged, and he's eating really well. So let's say in that initial observation, I notice an animal is swimming differently than other animals or uh, breathing a little bit differently than I'm used to. Well, I, without hesitation, we'll pick up the phone and we'll call the veterinarians. So as the veterinarians, we come out on a routine basis to do exams, but we really count on the trainers to be our eyes and ears. Knowing the animals as, as individuals and knowing how they interact with each other and with us, is, it's all a part of being able to read their behavior. And we do a full body exam on that animal, we'll check inside the blowhole, smell their breath, look inside their mouths and check and make sure that they're eating okay. Preventative medicine is a big part of what we do and that's just essentially a wellness check uh, where we're gonna do an exam, get blood work that's gonna give us baselines. We've been working so hard to prepare the animal to be able to give 
the sample or the exam to the vets. So for an ultrasound, we train the animals to keep the body at the surface so that the veterinarians can read their ultrasound. Sometimes we'll get what we call a blow sample, which allows us to look better at their respiratory tract. Uh, we can get gastric samples, which tells us what's going on in their stomach, fecal samples, which tells us what's going down further in the digestive tract. Uh, we can get urine samples, which gives us an idea what's going on with their kidneys. With Tilikum specifically, well, he's one of our older, more mature whales, and so I will assess his behavior, but then I'll go to some of these guys who are with Tilikum seven or eight times a day, six or seven times a week, and I'll say, you know, this is what I'm seeing, do you see it too? We might see for older whales that their kidneys aren't functioning quite as well. So we'll start looking at those kidney values to make sure they might need additional hydration. And if we institute additional hydration, how those kidney values are responding to what we do. We're a team that we rely on each other to provide the best possible health care for those animals. Good boy! There you go! You know, I've been working with Tilikum for about, about 10 years now. I started working with him in about uh, 2006. He's an animal that I feel like I have a phenomenal relationship go. with. He's got great energy. Tilly came from Sealand of the Pacific. He definitely needed to put on some weight. His dorsal fin had that same curve to it. His, his tail flukes had that same curve to them. And his teeth, they looked a lot like they do today. They needed to be cared for. So we started caring for his teeth as soon as he would allow us to train that behavior. Good morning, handsome. As an animal that has had some ups and downs health-wise, that's something that's always in the back of our mind with him. We tend to gear our day towards doing the things that he really seems like he's interested in at any point in that. So based on his health and based on his demeanor during the day, there are certain things that might be super fun for him. So if he's ready to go out and do a show and get people wet, I'm excited to do that with him. If he's more excited to just hang out and get a back rub and play with one of his favorite toys, guess what we're going to be doing? We're going to be doing that as well. Thank you for letting the dog check you out, sir. We take blood from him at least once a week, sometimes twice a week to kind of monitor what kind of inflammation is going on. Blood nice gives job, us a really Joe. nice picture into his health status. He can give us any sort of sample that we'd want voluntarily, whether it's a blood sample, a fecal sample, whether it's holding out a petri dish and having him blow in that petri dish so we can see what's going on in his lungs. We're able to get all of those things diagnostically so that our veterinary staff can plan out a course of action to help treat those things. Some of the issues that we're continuing to deal with are his, his chronic teeth issues, but probably the one that is most concerning is that he does have what we believe to be is a respiratory condition that is extremely difficult to treat. The species that we found in Tilikum is a type of bacteria that is found in a variety of species, including wild cetaceans. And for that, he receives a number of medications on a daily basis. We use a variety of oral antibiotics and antifungals that the trainers painstakingly every day, several times a day, will uh, administer in the fish. If Tilikum would have shown up with this disease in the wild, there's no doubt in my mind he'd, he'd been gone a long time ago. He's getting older, and um, what I know is that every day that I'm here, and every day that these amazing veterinarians are here, he will receive the best care. I wish I could say uh, I was tremendously optimistic about Tilikum in his future, um, but he has a, a disease which uh, is chronic and progressive and um, at some point might uh, cause his death. We have not found a cure for this disease at this point. Through the ups and downs of the life that we've been living with him, it's been our duty to make sure that we give him the utmost care we possibly can.